in spite of the corona pandemic, we have been conducting campaigns. Unfortunately, some of our contestors did not follow the COVID regulations. They were defying the regulation of not congregating and they, and they were gathering sizable numbers of people which of course would facilitate infection. I campaigned in the whole country by using indirect methods, holding leaders' meetings of not more than 200 people, or if there are more than 200 separated in the same venue, then using the radios. Even when I would come across large gatherings which would gather spontaneously, I would not come out to wave to them. Instead, I would sit inside the car and drive slowly, wave to them from inside the car, and continue. Nevertheless, the campaigns have now come to an end. The voting is the day after tomorrow. I call upon all registered voters to come out and vote. There have been practices of intimidation, where especially the opposition people have been threatening people not to come out and vote. In some areas, they have even attacked peaceful citizens. I held a meeting with the security forces. They are ready to defend you. Therefore, don't fear anything. Come out and vote. Nobody would intimidate you, would intimidate you. nobody will attack you. If anybody tries to do that, we shall get him or her. So therefore, don't fear anything. Go out and vote. You saw how the rioters were defeated in Kampala here. There's no threat we cannot defeat. Don't miss the chance to vote. You go out and vote. We shall defend you. We have got all sorts of means. Simple means and, comp and, and complex means. There's no part of Uganda where we cannot reach. If not on foot, but by air. Using all sorts of modern technology. I urge all citizens to keep peace. Keeping peace is a duty. It's not a favor. Sometimes some youth, especially in the urban, in Kampala area, they come and tell me how they are planning this, how they are, their leaders were telling them to plan bad things. You should tell everybody that keeping peace is a duty, it's not a favor. If you try to disturb peace, you'll have yourself to, to blame. The security forces following the law are ready to deal with any troublemaker. Therefore, do not be tempted to break the law. There's also the phenomenon of cheating. Some of the groups have made, it, have made it a habit of trying to cheat 
when it comes to elections. I want to tell you Ugandans that cheating in elections is treasonable. It is treason. Why? When the people vote for me or against me, it is a disciplinary measure by the voters vis-a-vis -vis the leaders. If the leader convinces people, talks well, or convinces them by actions, they vote for him or her voluntarily. If, on the other hand, the people are not happy with what you are saying or what you are doing, they vote against you. Now, when you use violence to intimidate so that you are elected, you are committing treason. Why? Because if you win, you will not have won with the support of the majority. Now, if you win like that, and you are in parliament or, or in government for five years, you won by intimidation or by the use of force, you, most, most likely you are going to do very little for the, for the area where you are elected. You are not going to develop these people. Why? Because you know that the next time I can again use intimidation, use violence, and be elected. Therefore, I don't have to, as they say in the Bantu dialects, okweguya, the voters, to handle the voters with care. Because you know that if you don't handle them with care by solving their problems, they will vote against you next time. Now, when you get the voters, when you get the leaders, not to kweguya abantu, not not to act carefully in case the voters don't turn against you, then the, the constitution is overthrown. The same with cheating. If you plan to cheat, to alter results, to do multiple voting, so that you, you win even when the majority did not vote for you. It means that the ballot of the Wananchi is no longer of any value. You can win still by either violence and intimidation or by cheating. That means that in five years you are in parliament, you don't have to go back to the people to, to help them solve their problems. Because you know that you will win either by cheating or by violence. That means that the whole fundamental arrangement of democracy is rendered null and void. Therefore, I am warning everybody, please do not try to cheat. I'm glad the Electoral Commission has finally brought a system which is foolproof. This is the one where you can only vote if you show your fingerprint. God gave each one of us a unique stamp, a fingerprint. My fingerprint is not the same as my mother's, is not the same as my father's, although I came from them. Mine is unique and theirs is unique. 
Therefore, I appeal to the Electoral Commission to do not allow any voting where the thumbprint is not used. I know there are some more election officials who have been colluding with the criminals where they want to interfere with the machines so that they claim that the machines are not working and therefore they should vote using the ID cards. Some of the ID cards have, have been faked. They are not genuine and some of the uh, they, they want to introduce new names on the on the ballot uh, uh, in, in the ballot in, in, in new ballot papers. If anything like that happens, my my appeal to the electoral commission is that then voting on that polling station should not take place. They should suspend it until the issue of the machine is solved, so that everybody votes through the machine. That would eliminate ballot, uh, multiple voting. It will eliminate ghost voting. It will eliminate voting in areas where you are not supposed to be. We shall have a really free and fair election. And anybody who is trying to cheat, we shall go for him. Please don't try. We shall, we shall, get, we shall get you. We, we have discussed with the security forces. We fought for the right to vote. That's why we fought so many wars. Nobody should interfere with it. I appeal to you, please do not waste our time by trying to cheat. Let the people of Uganda elect the way they, 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 they feel so that leaders concentrate on, concentrate on uh, convincing people and when they, are, they have a chance to be elected, they, to, 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 to serving them so that the people are happy to vote for you again.